Did you know there are over 1,400 living species of bat? Well, I did, and I love every single one of them. What's not to love about the world's only flying mammal? See, my earliest memory involving bats goes back to when I was around six or seven. My mom and I were at the Sacramento Reptile Show, an annual expo for reptile connoisseurs, when we came across a stand that had something very non-reptile on it. Bats. I found out this stand was set up by NorCal Bats, an organization dedicated to the rehabilitation and release of injured bats in Northern California. And at their stand in small glass enclosures, they had some big brown bats. Now, despite the name, big brown bats are not that big. Adults weigh a little less than an ounce and have a wingspan of only about a foot. This prompted me to ask the question, are these bats babies? Now, my mom responded, no, Tyler, these bats are not babies. Bats are small. This surprised me because as far as I was aware, all bats were pretty big. For example, the biggest bat that I was aware of, and which happens to be the biggest bat, period, is the giant golden crown flying fox, which has a wingspan of up to 5 feet. Of course, I now know that not all bats are quite as big. In fact, most are much smaller than this. With the world's smallest bat, the kitty's hognose bat, also known as the bumblebee bat, having a wingspan of less than half a foot. Anyway, a couple months later, I was happily vindicated. Me and my mom went to the Oakland Zoo, which is remarkable, might I add, and there we saw large flying foxes. My mom was taken aback by these bats. Of course, they do not have the golden crown flying fox. They have Malayan and island flying foxes, which are a bit smaller, but still huge nonetheless. Like all flying foxes, these species are named for their fox-like face and are fruit eaters. Yeah, it's worth noting that most bats are not blood suckers. In fact, no bats truly suck blood. Three do drink blood, but they're found in Latin America and mainly go after livestock. They rarely go after people. Also, when they do drink blood, they do not suck it, as I previously mentioned. They merely make incisions in the skin with their teeth and lap it up. But of course, they only do a couple ounces at a time, so they're not draining animals. Anyway, back to the matter at hand, when we saw the flying foxes, I took the time to rightfully gloat, as any kid would, and it was a great day. So those are my two first big encounters with bats, but I have some several wild encounters with bats I'd like to share with you that came later in life, namely July 2017. In July 2017, my mom, my sister, and I drove to Texas from California to visit family. And in Texas, if you did not know, there is a ridiculous amount of bats. <laughs> Texas is home to two of the world's largest colony of bats. And by that, I mean it is home to the world's largest colony of bats and the world's largest urban colony of bats, the latter of which is in Austin, Texas, and is 10 blocks from the Texas state capitol. That's right. Uh, under the Congress Avenue Bridge, 1.5 million bats spend their summer. Every night, this massive bat colony emerges from under the bridge and eats between 10 and 30,000 insects, saving the state's millions of dollars in pesticides. But, you know, bats are apparently the bad guys or whatever, so does it really matter? Anyway, in July 2017, me, my mom, my sister, cousin, and aunt went on a boat underneath the bridge as the bats were emerging. It was a truly remarkable sight. Surely we did not see all 1.5 million bats that evening, but it was remarkable nonetheless. Sure, Mexican free-tailed bats aren't the biggest, but they are also the fastest mammal. Yes, they can fly faster than cheetah can run. And And they also have a massive range extending from the contiguous United States all the way down to South America. They're in fact also known as the Brazilian free-tailed bat. Point is, seeing such a remarkable tiny bat was great. This brings me to my next bat encounter. This takes place many years later in the summer of 2022 in, believe it or not, Costa Rica. Now this one's a little bit different. I actually did not see the bat in question, but I tried very hard to. I had named this trip, which was a summer study abroad for two weeks, Operation White Bat. Why? Because I very desperately wanted to see the Honduran White Bat. The best way to describe the Honduran White Bat is a tiny flying cotton ball. What's not to love about that? This bat is also interesting behaviorally as they are also known as tent making bats for their fact that they will trim leaves in such a way that they fold in on themselves and the bats will roost in the leaves. They do not roost in caves like other bats. So for two straight weeks, every time I saw a leaf uh, cusped a little weirdly, I would look under it to see the Honduran white bat, my favorite bat, and guess what? I didn't see it once. This is very disappointing, but I had a great trip nonetheless. You know, heard howler monkeys, saw toucans, what's not to love about that? But nonetheless, I will someday be returning to Costa Rica or traveling to Panama, Honduras, Nicaragua, where these bats are also found, and I will find these cute-ass bats, you mark my words. 
Pura Vida, as they say in Costa Rica. Anyway, the next and final wild bat encounter, my most recent bat encounter, I'd like to mention will have taken place this previous summer in South Africa. I was there for three weeks, and for the first couple days, I stayed at the Pangola Game Reserve, which was beautiful and remarkable, I must add. Anyway, for the uh, these days, we stayed at these accommodations that were surrounded by a fence, kind of in the middle of the bush, but because of this fence, we were able to walk around at night. On these little night walks of mine, I would see geckos, bugs, spiders, even some local cats. Uh, the biggest thing I saw was an impala. But one night, I think it was the second or third night, I was walking under some trees when my headlamp shone up and I saw eye shine. Now I thought to myself, what could this eye shine be from, of course? You know, it could have been uh, nocturnal primates like bush babies, also known as galagos. Could have been owls, but of course, I'm mentioning it in this video, so as you probably figured, it was actually bats. Wahlberg's epilated fruit bats to be specific, which are named for little small epaulets or patches found on the shoulders of males. Now these bats are not very big either, but they are bigger than most of the North American insect eating bats I've seen, so they were cool nonetheless. They mostly hung there for the time I was watching them, watching for a couple minutes. They flapped their wings a few times, but they mostly just stayed chilling. I didn't think they were bothered by me much, if at all. Anyway, I watched them, as I said, for a few minutes. Then I went to go get my friend, who had also come on this trip with me. Uh, she very much wanted to see bats, so I was trying to show her these bats. Of course, you know, by the time we got back, they were gone. She did later see bats on the trip, nonetheless, but it was still unfortunate at the moment. Anyway, so those are a few encounters I've had with bats. Anyway, with that, toodaloo, have a good day, and get the hell out of here.